Welcome to Married to Portuguese. On each episode, my English-Irish husband, Bob, and I discuss and laugh about our life and adventures in the Portuguese culture. Hi there. Hello again. Welcome back. We're back. We're back. We were here and we're like, okay, let's do another one. Let's do another one. Yeah. Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. Hundreds of people have written to me asking if we garden. Uh, We garden. We garden. We used to garden more than we do now. We do. We used to garden more. Yeah. I've always loved gardening. I, you know, my- um, You love planting. I love planting. And then you lose interest. No, I love planting and I love picking at it. But the caring of it and all that stuff, that was usually you. And I don't like doing it. And he doesn't like it. So it has to be a, a team a team effort for us. Um, you know, the thing is, is I grew up with my dad. Um, I mean, in Portugal, in the Azores, I mean, he was a farmer. I mean, he, that is what he did. He, he grew, um, we had orange groves. We had all kinds of different things that he grew in season, and um, and that was his livelihood. Do you have chickens? That was in our backyard. No, that was in our garden in the back. Did you have a pig? Yeah, we had a pig, too. What does that mean? I did not live on a farm. That was just the way it was. <laughs> he teases me all the time, and he says, you lived on a farm. And I'm like, I didn't live on a you farm. You grew stuff for a living. You had chickens and a pig. I'm sorry. Maybe my familiarity with farm stops with old McDonald, but that sure sounds like a farm to me. No, it was different. It was different. Like, the thing is, is when I think of a farm, I think of a farmhouse, lots of land with, you know, whatever, all these things. No, we we lived in um, a village and everyone in their backyard, they all had their little chicken coops and their uh, some pig pens and you know, a little, you know, adaga in the back for storing the wines and storing, you know, your potatoes and whatever for the for the season. But it was a yard. It was not a, a farm. And then there was the quinta. We had a quinta. And the quinta was the place where all the things were grown and all of that stuff. And uh, so, but no, I always, um, he always did that. So when we moved here when we immigrated here to the United States, you know, it's a lot different growing things here in the East Coast than it is in the Azores. In the Northeast, sure. Yeah. Because in the Azores, you can grow anything. You really can. And year round. And year round. Whereas here, you cannot. You cannot. So I know with my dad, you know, he, we always had, you know, grapes because we always, you know, would always have grape, a grape barber. We always had berries growing in our yard. Um, we always had, in the springtime, it was watercress, and then it was turnip greens, and then it was kale, the cabbage. Um, you know, it was always some uh, parsley and, um, you know, all of the, the dill, all of those things, the fennel, all of these things that we would use in our cooking. And... Um, so that was something that was always, I always saw that happening. So when my father, you know, could no longer, um, when he got older and he couldn't do that any longer, uh, he cemented the backyard. He cemented the backyard. I remember. Yeah. I remember. We came home one day and the backyard was gone. Well, backyard was gone. He cemented it and he's like, I can't do it anymore. Um, I don't think, you know, uh, anyone's going to be doing it the way that I'd like to have it done. So I'm going to cement the yard. So he cemented the yard and we're like, what happened to the yard? (laughs) I like the yard. And, uh, but that's what he did. And he was like, no, no, this is it. This has got to be done. It had to be done a certain way that he liked it. And, um, and he was afraid it was not going to be tended to and cared for the way he would. And he would look at it and would be upset about it. And he just didn't want it. So he just cemented the whole thing. So when we got here, when we bought this house, I wanted to have a garden. Mm-hmm. So we did a raised garden. We did a few raised we've gardens. Done, we've done a lot of variations for gardening. Yeah. So we've had, we had in-ground. Yes. And then we had raised beds. Yep. We've done planters. Yep. Uh, we've done a lot of planters. And then just... All sorts of animals started coming in, and everything was getting eaten before yeah. we could eat it. Yeah. And then 
we've got the issue here in the Northeast where you just you're always starting over. Yeah. Right. Yes. By the time you are just such farming, gardening, you're always a, a victim of the circumstances, weather wise and disease wise and everything else. And it just seems like an awful lot of work at the end. And and I travel, so it's yeah. hard for me to keep up with right. watering, weeding, and right and maintaining. I'm always envious when we when we visit folks' houses in the islands, and you know they've got their year round planters, fruit trees, and all of that stuff. Things grow whether they want them to or not. I and know. it just it, it just grows. Does. And uh, so I like to think that someday I would have that too. But uh, the challenge there is I don't like doing. It. <laughs> I want it. I just don't want to do it. So, and then the thing is, is we discovered CSAs, which, you know, we were, it was like, what? I can, you know, there's a different farming or different farmers in our area who um, will ask for like a certain dollar amount to be part of their growing season. Like they know they need X amount of money to grow their, ve- uh, their vegetables. Uh, this is what they can do to make a living. And there's only so many spots that you um, that are allowed or allotted, I should say, and you pay a certain percentage. And at that, you also they also share with you. So if it's a really wonderful, abundant year, you're going to get so many vegetables. You're going to get so much stuff to the point where I've had some years where the abundance was incredible that I'm dropping off bags to my aunt's house or to my cousin's house or to my sister's house or whatever, because it's so much stuff, which is just wonderful. And then there's some years where the growing is not that great. Last year was dry. It was so dry. We did not get as much lettuce last year. We did not get as much, you know, fill in the blank, you know, that we didn't get as much of. But he still made his money and he still can have his, you know, put food on the table for his family and have his own livelihood so it's you share you share in in that smart guy very very and so what happens is if you have csas in your area i highly recommend it because um the gentleman that we are with um that we work with i mean he is all natural all organic all like really i mean he is a scientist he's a scientist Literally, he went to school for science. Yeah, and he so he knows which seeds to grow, how to to cultivate it, so he doesn't have to use pesticides. And it, the the vegetables are just out of this world. And I think that's the way most CSAs are. They try to go as more organic than anything. So highly recommend it. It can be a little pricey, but in the end, it is so worth it. It's so worth it. it saves me from lugging a hose around the yard. Yeah. 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 And I feel like it's it's my garden as well. That farm is a part. I have a part of it also. Wherever it is. Wherever it is. Exactly. It, it, so in a way, it it is that way. I always have parsley growing in my backyard. I always have mint. I always have basil because I do like basil. But I do that in pots. I'm just remembering. Uh, I remember across the street from us, we had a neighbor, Mary. Yeah. And I uh, loved Mary. Mary was, gosh, her. 80s when we met her yeah must have been and uh she'd been a widow for 40 years at that at that that point didn't drive and she relied on her garden and she had a huge garden and it's just kind of a weird setup we can easily see her backyard and her garden she was out there all day every day and then she reached a point where it was just it was just too big and so she offered us half the garden to use. Yeah. She was funny. She was like, but you're going to have to bring your own water. So I had to buy additional hose to get the hose across the street. And, uh, oh my God, she just, she didn't like the way I arranged the tomato steaks. They weren't vertical enough. They weren't spaced properly. I wasn't weeding often, often enough. I didn't space the plants far enough apart. Not, it was just a summer of being told how wrong I was. And I think that was probably the the final the final straw that was it that was the final straw for me i loved her i oh she was great i loved mary i loved mary she would just come over and like no filter at all and she would just say whatever she had 
uh, in her mind and, and just, she was just, she came across as being rough and tough, kind of, but she was a marshmallow. She was actually a marshmallow. She was so sweet. Yeah, but she wasn't yelling at you for <laughs> wasting water or tomato plants. She was... She was a sweet woman. Why are you watering at night? Tomatoes don't like cold feet. Well, I've worked all day. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And then we'd go, really? And then she's like, no, they don't like cold feet. They don't like being wet at night. It's going to be during the day. And so there were little things that she would teach us in a way that, you know, she was reprimanding us, but she was also teaching us the way to do she it. She taught me to stop guarding and support CSA. <laughs> that's what she taught me. So for those people out there that always ask, so Maria, have you started, you know, your, have you, you know, gardening or sending, the, Bob, is Bob doing, you know, this this year? What are you planting this year? Uh, we're not, the only thing I'm planting is uh, seeds for my parsley, my flat leaf parsley, my mint, which grows up. I mean, we've got to do it in pots and it'll grow and regrow and grow and regrow. That's a weed. It can become a weed. You've got to be very careful how you plant that. And uh, and basil in pots as well. Um, I might um, grow some thyme. I do like thyme uh, as well. But that's about it. That's about it. May we seed the front yard again, which we do every year. Yeah. Yeah. And then the whole thing that we have, majority of our garden in our front and backyard is hydrangeas. We have hydrangeas everywhere. Got to start pruning those back. Yeah. So. And usually, I think this year, it's we've got to divide some. So it's calling friends and family going, we've got hydrangeas, who wants them? And uh, and no word of a lie, all our hydrangeas that we've given away, um, you know, for like our neighbors or our family, they are just, they flourish. They really do. Um, and, and hydrangeas is something that you cannot, ever since a gardener told me in the Azores to treat them like a weed, don't baby them, treat them like a weed, and they'll grow. And, and I think ever since someone said that to me, um, it was the main gardener in uh, Taha Nostra who told me that. He's like, oh no, they're a weed. You can plant them. They'll grow in the shade. They'll grow in the sun. They'll, you know, this, that. And that's how I think of them now. And they just. So basically I treat them like a weed because. He treats them like a weed. You don't do the yard work. I, I sometimes, I don't to say that. I do too. Telling me what to do is not doing yard work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Touche. <laughs> Touche. It's like, no, no, no. You're supposed to trim it there, Bob. Bob, no, no, no. Yeah. Dude, that's not treating it like a weed. He is now... Yeah. We're not letting this podcast end, because when it does, <laughs> I'm in big trouble. He's in so much trouble now. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it, hydrangeas. That's what we have a lot in our yard. That's what we grow a lot of, mm -hmm. is that. And I love that. I you love started it. with roses. We, did. we had dozens and dozens of different rose roses. We really did. We had climbing roses. We had yellow, red, pink. I mean, just we did. Yeah, there's still a few around. I don't know what happened. Some kind of a disease happened, and I think we lost most of them all. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we did start with roses. I do love roses, but it they're harder. They're harder to grow in our soil here. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. So, but yeah, but that's our gardening segment, folks. That's it. That's it. Don't expect another one. Don't expect another one because we're tapped out. We are. This is it. <laughs> there is no gardening. Uh, you know, I like to look at seed, uh, seed uh, catalogs. I like to look at gardening catalogs and like go, oh, that looks really good, Bob. And he'll go, nope, we have no room for it. No. So, so there's. That's where our gardening goes. So that's that's the scoop, folks. That's it. Gardening. Another short one. Another short one. All right, <laughs> All right guys. Have a great one. Right, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and we'd love to hear your ideas for topics. Ciao.